Hello, everyone. Welcome to Screen Scream on Viola. In today's episode, we're going to talk about horror movies. It's pretty rare because basically, I don't watch horror, and technically, all the movies we're going to talk about today are not horror at all. They just have horror as their subgenre. So the theme today is horror movies of Viola's standard, which is not scary at all. In newly released section, we're going to talk about two movies that are not from Hollywood. Hope you will like the show today. Let's listen to the first new movie we're going to talk about. Character: A kind man aspires to become a comic creator, but villains and evil deeds do not come easily to him, for he has little experience or natural inclination for them. Things take a surprise turn when he comes across a family who were described as ideal life that are no more. He uses the real life situation for his work. The first new movie we're going to talk about today, character, is a Japanese movie, and I think the introduction is way too subtle. It says. Things take a surprise turn when he comes across a family who were described as idealized that are no more. Wow, it just says that are no more. Actually, the whole family was killed. It's not spoiler because it's the background setting of the movie. I've seen character at the screening and I think it's pretty good. Just some of the end settings seem like they want to set up for a sequel, but overall, it's a pretty exciting movie and not very gruesome. So the story is about the protagonist witnesses a murder and he turns it into a comic strip. This is the director's darkest work. The award-winning actor Suda Masaki is the comic creator, and the vocal of a rock band Fukase is the serial killer. The evil part of this movie is that the comic creator and the serial killer keep copying each other. It's like they co-create the killing because after the protagonist draws the serial killer's appearance in his comic strip, the real killer mimics everything he draws in the comic and performs those killings. As I mentioned, I've seen the movie and it's not very gruesome. So even if you're kind of afraid of bloody scenes, I think character is quite okay. It only has more blood towards the end. Overall, I think the movie is pretty exciting, and the plots are unexpected. But my favorite part is the supporting actor, Oguri Shun. Oh my God, he's so handsome in the movie. I mean, the scriptwriter said that originally the prototype of the character detective is based on Oguri Shun, but after they shoot some scenes. They realized that oh, it's not cool or not handsome enough. So the director told Oguri Shun to be more handsome or cooler, and it was really difficult for him. He was like, "How can I be more handsome or cooler than what I already am?" But eventually, he made it, and he even said that he's too handsome that he's a little bit embarrassed about himself. But I think if you like Japanese movies. Or you like the serial killer topic, or you like Oculation character is the right movie to pick for this weekend. Now let's listen to the second new movie we're going to talk about today. Cop Secret. A cop in denial of his sexuality falls in love with his new partner while investigating a string of bank breaking. Three bankers. Okay, so the second movie we're going to talk about today is not horror at all. It's actually an action comedy, and it seems pretty interesting just from listening to the introduction of it. First of all, the title of the movie sounds like Top Secret, but it's actually a secret about a cop. Secondly, the protagonist denies his sexuality, but he falls in love with his partner, which is probably going to be very awkward and funny, maybe. The special part about this movie is that it's from Iceland. When it comes to Iceland, people's first impression might be the aurora, volcanoes, such natural sceneries. Besides, football in Iceland is pretty popular as well. 
They ascended to Elite Eight at the European Cup before, and they even entered the World Cup in 2018. I'm personally a football fan, so of course I remember, but I don't know about you. If you still remember the World Cup in 2018, you will remember that the goalie of Iceland, Hans Heldorsen, blocked a penalty from Messi in Iceland's first game. So they had a draw, one to one, with Argentina. All the football fans in the world were surprised, and Hans Heldorsen became the national hero in one day. You may wonder, hey, we're talking about Cup Secret. We're talking about a movie. What does it have to do with football? The thing is, Hans Heldorsen is not only a professional footballer. He also has another identity, which is a movie director. And Cup Secret is his very first feature film. This is so cool. Like he's the coolest slashy I've ever seen. Well, not really seen. But still, it's pretty cool. Cop Secret ranked number one at the box office in Iceland for four weeks in a row, and it got more box office than Marvel's Eternals. The movie was starred by the 41-year-old famous comedy actor Owen Blondell. I'm not sure how to pronounce it because it's Islandska. He's pretty good at saying punchlines and action scenes, and his appearance and style. Give him the name Jason Statham of Northern Europe. So if you don't want any horror at all, you can consider this action comedy this weekend. Before we move on to top double seven, let's review what we had from last week first. Top three, there were two movies: Ghostbusters Afterlife and Till We Meet Again. Top two, Encanto. I realized that I pronounced it wrongly last week. Sorry about that. It should be Encanto. Top one, Eternals. And do you have the guess for a horror this week? Let's listen to top seven to top four. Top five, House of Gucci. I've been a Gucci all my life. Your name is in the history books. Wow. Top four, American Girl. 不需要，反正暑假就回 LA 了。我答应 Jessie 要一起去 horse camp. Ghostbusters. After a lot. Oh, killer replica! A replica of what? A ghost trap. Okay, so on this week's chart, there are three movies from top seven to top four this week. We've talked about American Girl and Ghostbusters Afterlife, and apparently House of Gucci is about murder, so it's related to horror. But today, I still want to talk about Ghostbusters Afterlife because first of all. The director of this episode is the son of the director of the classic one. So the director this time is called Jason Reitman. His father is the director of the first two episodes of the series. Even Reitman. Imagine how cool that is. Your father made a movie twenty or thirty years ago, and now you're making a sequel for it. Basically, Jason grew up with his dad at the studio. So it's super meaningful to make a sequel for his father's classic work. He not only wants to earn his father's recognition, but also has very special emotion toward this work. The director said that his father hasn't gone out for a long time because of COVID-19, but he participated in the screening of his son's movie, and he was even at the edge of bursting into tears. Saying that he's very proud of his son, so that really was a very important moment for the director. The purpose of this episode is to create a new generation of Ghostbusters. The protagonist is Paul Rudd from Ant-Man. He played a teacher leading his students to research on a mysterious phenomenon in a small town, and they find mysterious clues about. The original Ghostbusters accidentally, and then a whole new Ghostbusters story starts. The female protagonist is the 15-year-old McKenna Grace. She's called the little girl who's best at Marvel superstars. The reason is that when she first came out to act, she played with Chris Evans in. 
gifted, and she also had a lot of cooperation with Paul Rudd in Ghostbusters Afterlife this time. So if you are a fan of Ghostbusters, you better watch the latest sequel. And here comes the top three to top one this week. Top three. Till we meet again. Top two. Eternals. How long do we have? Seven days. Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City. We need to expose Umbrella. Top one. Encanto. Why am I the only one that didn't get a gift? You are just as special as anyone else in this family. Wow, Eternals is not top one anymore, but the winner is still Disney because it's Encanto. I think it's pretty obvious which movie we're going to talk about. It's Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City. Some of my friends said, "Come on, that's not scary. It's not horror at all." But come on, yes, it is for me. Okay, there are a lot of zombies and scary monsters in it. It's super scary. The director wanted to pay tribute to the horror movies in the 70s and 80s. He likes the shooting styles and the unique scary movie languages they use. Since the director likes the shooting skills in the 70s, the scary styles and the presentation of the tone of the whole Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. Is full of a lot of close-up shots, which are exactly what I don't like because the images will stay in your subconscious and they will come out when you have dreams. In my case, I have dreams every day, and I don't want monsters and ghosts in my dreams. That's the reason why I don't watch horror. And since the director wants to present the nostalgic old-school horror movie. There isn't any exaggerated CGI special effects or drone shots in it. I've seen my cousin and my boyfriend play Resident Evil before. I also played it. Well, I I wouldn't even call that one time because I just took the controller and once there's any monster or ghost around, the controller would start vibrating, and I would just give it back. To whoever wants to play it, I can't do it. It's too scary. And when it comes to horror games, I remember the scariest one I've ever played is Fatal Frame. It's about the protagonist goes into this haunted place whenever he or she, I think it's he, falls into sleep, and he has this special camera. Whenever he takes a picture of the ghost, the ghost will be sucked into the camera, and if you can catch all the ghosts, it's kind of like Ghostbusters, right? But still, the same. If you play it with like PlayStation or some other consoles, whenever the ghosts are close to you, the controller will start vibrating. It drives me crazy. I can't do it. So I hope you get my point. The whole episode today is about horror movies of my standard, Viola standard, which is not scary at all. I don't watch horror. I don't want their images to stay in my subconscious. I don't play horror games. I can't stand the controller vibrating when there are ghosts close to me. And although the latest Resident Evil film isn't critically acclaimed. If you are a fan of the video game, I recommend you to watch it because the director promised that it's not going to be like an action movie like the original series. This one is going to be similar to the video game. That's all the time we have for today. Hope you like the show and remember to tune in same time next week at Screen Screen. I'm Viola. See you next week.